If your credit score is under 580, then unfortunately you're considered to have bad credit. So in this video, I'm going to show you the best credit cards for those with bad credit. All of these cards are going to be unsecured, meaning that you do not need to put down a deposit to get access to the credit line. As a person who owns a credit repair agency, I've seen it all. Late payments, collections, the bankruptcies, with all of those negative marks, getting a real credit card is tough. So before I go over each one of those cards, just to let you know that your options are going to be limited. The limits that you get access to will be smaller as well. You might also have to pay a little bit more because of yearly fees and other costs that comes with these credit cards. I know that this isn't great, but having bad credit usually means things cost more, no matter how you look at it. So if you are interested in credit repair, I do have a software that can help you out or you can join our community where I give you everything that you need to know how to repair your credit on your own and leverage it later on link below. So if all the cards I will be sharing with you today, they aren't meant to be kept forever. They're there to help you build a better payment history, add a new line of credit, and give you some extra money when you really need it. So without further ado, let's go over our first card, which will be the Reflex Platinum card. With this card, you can check if you can get pre-approved before you actually apply. They offer a credit limit from $300 to $1,000, which is pretty decent for a credit card that's not secured. Plus, they promise that they can double your credit limit if you pay on time for the first six months. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Now, finding out the yearly fee isn't the easiest unless you read the fine print. They warn you that there are some fees on setting up and keeping the card, which can be taken out of your credit limit before you even use it. For instance, if your credit limit is $300, you might only get to use $225 at first. They mentioned that you can actually say no to this deal if you haven't used the card or pay any fees after getting your first bill. So if you were to go for this card, think about saying no to this part right away. The yearly fee is between $75 to $125 to start, then $99 to $125 each year after that. Also from the second year, there's a $10 monthly fee, which brings the maintenance fee total of $195 to $245 in the ongoing year. Moving on to our second credit card, which will be the first access visa card. With this one, they will start you off with a credit limit of at least $300 depending on your credit worthiness. The good news is that you do not need to put down a secure deposit Instead, there's a one-time program fee of $95 to open your account. Remember that the $95 is just to get started. There's also a yearly fee of $75 for the first year, then it drops to $48 after that. As for the monthly fees, you won't have any during the first year, but after that, it will be an ongoing $8.25 per month. So when you add it all up, the fees for the first year will come down to $147. What sets this card apart from the others, you get a 1% cashback rewards on the payments that you made on this card. Next up, let's dive into the Fit Platinum MasterCard. This card comes with a one-time fee of $89, that you pay before you even start your account, followed by a $99 annual fee. From the second year onwards, there is a monthly fee of $6.25. For those who are working on improving or dealing with bad credit, this card offers a starting limit of $400, which is slightly higher than the other options. Plus, cardholders have a chance to double their credit limit after making their first six monthly payments on time. However, it's important to note that this card doesn't come with any rewards. It's purely a tool to build or repair your credit. Next, let's move on to our next card, which will be the Aspire Cash Back Rewards card. This card comes with an annual fee ranging from $49 to $175 in the first year. Then afterwards, the fee adjusts anywhere between nothing to $49. Also, starting with the second year, there is a monthly fee that kicks in, which varies between $5 to $12.50. I understand that managing all of these fees might seem a bit complicated over time, so when your credit climbs above the 600s, it might be a good idea to start looking for cards designed for fair credit instead. What's interesting about this card is that, especially for those with lower credit, it has a reward system. You earn 3% cash back on gas and utilities, and 1% back on all other purchases. It is quite rare to find an unsecured card that offers rewards this high, so having this is a pretty nice little touch. The credit limit on this card can go up to $1,000 depending on your credit worthiness. Plus, you can pre-qualify for this card without impacting your credit, giving you a sneak peek to see whether or not you can get approved. Next, we're gonna be looking at the Surge Platinum MasterCard. This card comes with an annual fee that ranges between $75 and $125. After the first year, you're gonna be facing up to $10 per month just to keep this account active. However, on a positive note, this card offers a starting credit limit up to $1,000, which could increase up to $2,000 after you make your first six monthly payments on time. But starting off, your credit limit could be between $300 to $1,000, but if your credit isn't so great, Expect it to be on the lower end. You can check if you qualify for this card without affecting your credit, 
which is always a good thing. But remember that this card doesn't offer any rewards and is primarily designed just to build credit. Next on our list will be the first digital MasterCard. This unsecure card comes with a $95 program fee, which you would have to pay before you start using this account. For the second year, this is $75 annual fee, which then decreases to $48 from the second year onwards. However, starting in the second year, you'll face a monthly fee, which making the total cost for the first year of this card is $147. This card offers a 1% cash back on all purchases, a benefit that's not often found in cards in this category. As for the credit limit, you're gonna be getting at least $300, depending on your credit, Plus, you can check if you can pre-qualify for this card without impacting your credit score. While it doesn't boast any unique features or additional rewards, its cash back offer in all purchases is a nice perk for a card designed to help build credit. The next card on our list will be the Revy card. This card comes with a one-time fee of $95 when you open it. For the first year, it carries an annual fee of $75, which then decreases to $48 in future years. However, starting in the second year, you face a monthly fee of $8.25. Despite these fees, there is a silver lining this card offers a 1% cashback rewards on all payments made with it. You can start with a credit limit of at least $300. The card allows for a credit limit increase request after 12 months, though fees apply for this request. So I wouldn't recommend keeping this card more than a year. Next, let's dive into the Credit One Bank Platinum Visa card. This card is a little bit unique because it's suited for those on the higher end of bad credit verging into the fair credit territory. But the good news is that you can still have a solid chance of getting a pre-approved thanks to the pre-qualification tool, which allows you to check your odds without affecting your credit score. This card offers a 1% cash back on eligible purchases, which is a nice perk. It does come with an annual fee of $39, making it somewhat more affordable compared to the other options that we discussed. It's important to note though, that this card doesn't allow for balance transfers. Now, given the higher interest rates typically associated with this card, I wouldn't recommend transferring balances to it anyways. So if you're inching closer to fair credit, but not quite there yet, this card might be worth considering for its approval odds and cashback rewards, despite the annual fee. The next card on the list will be the Indigo MasterCard. This credit card is offering credit limits of $700 or more with no security deposit needed. But this card does have an annual fee of $175 for the first year and $49 afterwards. Although the annual fee does drop to $49 after the first year, there will be a monthly fee of $12.50 that will get added on. Now with the credit limit of $700, this means that you get $525 to spend considering that annual fee will be applied to the card before you can begin using it. Next on our list will be the Milestone credit card. This card is similar to the Indigo card, offering a credit limit of $700. The fee structure is the same as this card comes with an annual fee of $175 for the first year, dropping it to $49 in future years. Starting from the second year, you also face a monthly fee of $12.50, which is an important factor to consider. Just like the Indigo card, the Milestone card effectively provides you with a starting limit of $700, but due to the annual fee, your actual available credit initially becomes $525. As you've gone through the top cards with those with bad credit, my personal advice is to consider secure cards that transition to unsecure cards as a better pathway if you need to get a credit card. While this might not be the most ideal option for those that are tight on funds, there are several solid options out there that can serve your needs as well. The Discover It Secure Card is definitely one of those standout options that are on the market. It is pretty available to anyone out there thanks to its lack of annual fee. What makes it even more attractive is the rewards program, offering 1-2% to cash back on purchases. This card takes it a step further by doubling the rewards that you earn within the first year as a special anniversary gift. However, it does require a minimum deposit of $200 to get started, which is on the lower end for secure cards. Discover says that they will review your account starting at seven months to assess if they can move you to an unsecured line of credit. If successful, your deposit will be returned back to you. For those with a connection with Navy Federal, the End Reward Secure Card is an excellent choice. Even though membership is required with Navy Federal, there are various ways to join, which I covered in previous videos that you can find up here. This card stands out because you can pre-qualify without hurting your credit. Also, this card has no annual balance transfer, foreign transaction, or cash advance fees. After depositing at least $200 into a savings account to secure the card, Navy Federal may partially unsecure the card at three months, maintaining the deposit while increasing your credit limit. By six months, they'll consider upgrading you to an unsecured card. So in a matter of a few months to a year, you can go from secured to unsecured with a high credit limit. Now I get that choosing an unsecured card means that you won't have to pay a secure deposit. However, when you factor in the annual fees and other charges, it might end up costing you the same as a secure card in the first year. The advantage of secure cards is that even though your money is tied up into account, so when that account gets closed or upgraded, 
you will eventually get that deposit back. With those unsecured cards, any fees that you pay is gone for good since you spent that money and you won't get reimbursed. So if you must opt for unsecured credit cards, try to only use them for a short period, ideally no more than a year. Now, if you are a person who already has built up a credit profile, meaning that you have a few credit cards or loans, then I suggest just repairing your credit. This can increase your credit score and you can qualify for better credit cards in the future whenever you are in need of a new one. To learn strategies to boost your credit while rebuilding it, check out these videos over here.